At the end of the Middle Ages, the development of mechanized timers and their combination with previously hand-operated timekeeping instruments leads to the invention of mechanical clocks. Prominently mounted on town halls and church towers, they characterize the townscape of central European cities coming to life intellectually and economically at the beginning of the historical epoch we call the Renaissance, or rebirth. As an independently running model of the sky, the clocks show the 24 hours of the day and the date. This allows people to make appointments, keep schedules, and reorganize social life regardless of the weather, setting a process in motion of a gradual decoupling of human activities from natural celestial rhythms to which these had previously always been aligned. The constant beat of the mechanical clock not only means a revolution in practical life, it also brings about fundamental changes in the way people in the early modern period view the world. People begin to imagine the universe as a cosmic clockwork. Its mechanics had probably once been conceived by a creator god, but once set in motion, God no longer intervenes. So it was concluded that just as with a clock, which can be disassembled into all its small and large gears to understand their structure and function, it should also be possible to recognize the underlying laws of the world individually and to understand their harmonious interplay. This idea was also the basis for the construction of the first mechanical planetarium, which Giovanni de Dondi completed in Padua in 1364. It demonstrated the course of the planets known since antiquity by means of clockwork. For its construction, he still drew on the laws of motion of the celestial bodies going back to Ptolemy, with the Earth at the center of the universe. 200 years later, Nicolaus Copernicus publishes his comprehensive theory according to which the Earth and the planets revolve around the Sun and not vice versa. The propagation of this theory was to make Galileo Galilei, also a professor in Padua, unpopular with the then powerful church. Mechanical time measurement enabled scholars like Galileo to formulate theories about nature based on clear observation and to test them precisely using experiments. The laws revealed through measurement are described using the formulas and methods of mathematics, understood as the universal language of nature. The new methods form the foundation of the modern exact natural sciences and contribute to a scientification of the world, which from then on runs through all creative areas of human activity. There is hardly anything we associate with the Renaissance as much as the great works of artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, or Raphael. What they all have in common is the attempt to depict space rationally, based on mathematical geometric laws, and as it actually appears to us. In 1530, Antonio da Correggio follows this principle when he, for the first time, paints a dome in the Cathedral of Parma with one continuous image, thereby extending the building's architecture virtually. Admittedly, in Correggio's work, space still opens onto a view of a mythical and religious concept of the heavens typical for his time. Yet, in the illusion painting founded by artists like him, the representational techniques of dome presentations also emerge, like those in the planetarium. <laughs> 